forces have not come under attack from enemy air forces since the Korean War. This is because the United States has been able to maintain air supremacy, providing the freedom of action required by the joint warfighter to emerge victorious on the battlefield. However, for the first time, our claim to air supremacy is in jeopardy. Over the past several decades, our potential adversaries have closely followed both our technological advances and employment doctrine. These countries have implemented developmental programs to specifically counter our current capabilities. The challenges we face today will only grow in complexity and sophistication as our potential adversaries continue to develop, produce and deploy new technologies. We are being challenged across the entire spectrum to include land, sea, air, cyber, and space. One of the most pervasive threats, modern ground-based air defenses, has reached unprecedented lethality. Our overwhelming success in Desert Storm highlighted the inherent vulnerabilities of our adversaries' defenses. Since then, there has been a global revolution to modernize air defense systems. At the heart of this threat is the surface-to-air missile, or SAM. Since the first SAMs were deployed by the Germans in World War II, our adversaries and potential adversaries have relentlessly pursued their development in an effort to counter U.S. air power. Over time, nearly every air power advancement fielded has been matched by SAMs, becoming increasingly lethal against a greater variety of air targets at longer and longer ranges. Both Russia and China are producing state-of-the-art SAMs. Shown are several systems that are currently fielded that directly challenge our bid for air supremacy. These modern systems can engage as many as a dozen targets simultaneously at ranges in excess of 100 miles. Furthermore, they are not tied to a prepared site. They are highly mobile, allowing them to relocate in minutes rather than hours or days. To illustrate the dynamics of the SAM threat, here is the threat ring posed by a Vietnam-era SA-2 SAM. It's located on the Washington Mall with its short-range coverage. And now we add the SA-10 and the SA-20 system, the same system being sold to Algeria and Iran. You can clearly see the dramatic increases in ranges. Next, we add the SA-21, which is currently deployed in Russia. And finally, Russia's developmental S-500 will be capable of engaging targets as far away as Charlotte and Buffalo. Senior Russian military officials have claimed this revolutionary aerospace defense system moves ahead of their potential enemies by 15 to 20 years. The system should be fielded by 2015. As you can see, these systems are being proliferated globally in battalion strength and we expect this trend to continue. The proliferation of these lethal double-digit SAMs is currently one of the most significant challenges we face. Some of these systems could show up close to home. If Venezuela acquires an advanced SAM in the near future, they will be able to challenge our ability to conduct peaceful logistics and ISR missions in the region. The Taiwan Strait is an excellent example of the impact of air defense modernization. In 2000, China had only a handful of legacy SAM systems deployed opposite Taiwan, offering limited coverage and allowing freedom of movement along most of the coastline. Over the past few years, China has been steadily deploying modern SAM systems. You can see the significant change in coverage. The air defense threat is not restricted to land. The same systems are being deployed on board their ships extending their air defense umbrella well over Taiwan. Looking at today's notional Chinese air defense umbrella on the strait, it is redundant, extensive, and survivable, creating an environment that would be extremely difficult, if not impossible, for fourth-generation fighters to penetrate or defeat. Moving on to the air threat, the production and proliferation of advanced fighters 
provides capabilities equal to or surpassing our legacy fighters. There are several advanced European fighters currently being fielded. Griffin. Fail. Typhoon. That are very competitive with our legacy F-15s. And in some areas they are technologically superior. These fighters are being marketed worldwide and could be sold to a future adversary. Our potential adversaries are making equally significant strides in fielding the latest technologies. One only has to look at the trend in aircraft development over the past several decades to see where our legacy systems are being overtaken. Said another way, 20 years ago our qualitative edge was matched with the appearance of the Russian Su-27 flanker. Today our legacy fighters are being outmatched by the latest Russian and Chinese fighters. As you can clearly see, there is basically no distinct fourth generation advantage we hold. Russia is at the forefront of advanced fighter technology development. China is also rapidly moving forward with significant aerospace developments based on improvements to existing foreign technologies. Both countries continue to push the envelope, fielding fifth-generation technologies. Both Russia and China are ready and willing to export these fighters to anyone willing to pay for them. You can clearly see the extent of the proliferation problem. It will only get worse. One can easily see how these fighters are closing the gap in terms of capabilities. Over time, their advantage will continue to overtake ours as more advanced technologies are fielded. The heart and soul of these fighters is their radar. They are modern pulse Doppler, look down, shoot down systems with anti-jamming features. They can simultaneously track at least 10 targets and engage four with advanced missiles. In the air-to-air -air missile arena, we have traditionally held the high ground in the beyond visual range fight with our AIM-120 AMRAAM. That has all changed. China has fielded an AMRAAM class missile of their own, designated PL-12. Russia is also fielding similar missiles. One can see the parity the Chinese have reached with the PL-12. Both China and Russia are also developing follow-on missiles with significantly increased range performance. They are outpacing us in the missile arena and can directly challenge our AMRAAM superiority. Enhancing our adversary's first shot capability is their rapid integration of modern jammers, specifically digital radio frequency memory, or DERFM based jammers. These jammers can capture and replicate at high speed our air intercept radars. It can return a false signal, leaving our fighters blind at the most critical moment of the fight. Again, both Russia and China are fielding DERFM systems that can deny any first launch capability. Bottom line, the size of the stick no longer matters. This technology has shifted the first shot advantage into the adversary's court. Some of these fighters are equipped with very advanced Russian engines that incorporate thrust vectoring technology. This technology provides significant and dynamic maneuverability and turning capability. The F-15C is no longer the world's premier air superiority fighter. No matter how you look at it, Russian and Chinese advanced flanker variants have achieved parity or surpassed many of the Eagle's technological advantages. Additionally, China is developing an advanced flanker variant, designated J-15, that will form the nucleus of a carrier air wing. This new flanker variant recently conducted its maiden flight. They will probably also adapt the highly capable F-10 fighter for carrier operations. China's first carrier could attain initial operating capability as early as 2012. Such a capability can only enhance their regional dominance. The threat doesn't stop here. Russia will soon field its latest flanker variant, the Su-35, a very advanced fighter that will clearly help bridge the gap between their current fourth generation and future fifth generation fighters. 
The SU-35 will incorporate numerous fifth-generation fighter attributes such as advanced digital flight controls, sensor fusion, high-power jammer, ultra-long-range air-to-air missiles, and supercruise engines with thrust vector control. This fighter is being heavily marketed. We expect countries like Venezuela, China, and Libya to be targeted heavily as future customers. Our potential adversaries, fifth-generation fighters, are here today. Russia's fighter is designated as the PAC-FA and is in active flight testing. The PAC-FA is being designed to fulfill the air superiority and deep precision strike. It is purposely designed to outperform the F-22 and F-35 and compete on the global markets. This advanced fighter is expected to be fielded by 2015. China's contender is called the XXJ. The Air Force's Deputy Commander, General He, stands firmly behind the program and is confident it will make its maiden flight by 2012 and become operational by 2018. Both of these fighters are specifically being designed to counter F-22 and F-35 capabilities. They will also likely be exported at prices that undercut the F-35. Future clients will be purchasing very advanced fighters with near F-22 capabilities in quantities rivaling F-35 production estimates. This clearly illustrates how both Russia and China are bridging the threat gap. With the PAC-FA and the XXJ, you can see how their developing fighter programs are challenging our fifth generation fighter dominance. Technology is market driven, which rapidly accelerates its accessibility to the global market. Russia's military resurgence and prosperous China combined with two diverse and expansive aerospace industries are rapidly closing any existing gaps our legacy fighters retain as their fighter production and proliferation continues. As you can see, our adversaries have never failed to meet the challenges to their air power that we present them with. Looking at other threats, arguably one of the most important challenges we face is the cyber threat. Russia and China, recognizing our vulnerabilities, are maturing dedicated and highly sophisticated programs to exploit and attack our military computer networks. We are absolutely dependent on these networks to control and direct our force in peacetime and wartime. Last but certainly not least is the issue of space superiority. For the first time, the U.S. is no longer uncontested for control of space. In January 2007, China shocked the world by destroying a low Earth orbit target satellite with a ballistic missile-based interceptor. This event underscores that space is no longer a sanctuary for us. Bringing it all together, we face significant challenges across the board. When taken in total, our potential adversaries can create a nearly impenetrable box that our legacy fighters cannot enter, thus denying us air supremacy. Without air supremacy, we lose the most powerful edge we hold on the modern battlefield today. We can no longer operate with impunity against the very latest integrated threats. These challenges will only grow as our qualitative and quantitative edge continues to ebb. Remember, there is no prize for second best.